All right, guys, we are at the Hyundai Booth Con Expo 2023. We're going to do a walk around of the HA30 haul truck, 30 ton haul truck. This thing is an absolute work of art. Let's check it out and see what it's all about. Good morning, Joe. Morning. How are you? I'm good, man. We had uh, we both survived the Hyundai event last night. We survived. I think it. you might have had a little better time than me. I had a good time. They <laughs> called me Two Fist last night for a reason. <laughs> well, trying to compete with some of the other uh, people in my group. We won't mention names, but I hear you are the residing expert on this beautiful piece of art. So tell us all about it. Yeah, so we have two models of our articulating dump truck. We have the HA30, which we have here on display at our booth today, and we have an HA45. Now, it's a 30-ton and a 45-ton truck. Uh, both of these machines have a Scania engine in them with no DPF. This machine has a DC9 with 370 horsepower. The uh, other machine has a DC13 with 493 horsepower. Can we, uh, uh, can we jump up on top and get a little closer to look at the power plant? Sure. Let's, I'm, I'm an up close touch and feel kind of guy, Joe. Yeah, go ahead. And you got these fancy steps here, so we might as well take a, take a hike, so. Let's do it. Now you guys are also running this particular engine uh, in some of the loaders, is that correct? Uh, no, we're not running them in the loaders. We used to back uh, a few years ago, but we've went away from that. And uh, these machines are built over in Norway and they have a uh, good history with them. So they've kind of stuck with these uh, engines. Right, these are not quite as popular in the United States, but they're definitely proven to be uh, good, reliable, good, reliable engines. Yeah, and one of the things is uh, with this engine, uh, the factory allows our dealers to be uh, certified to work on them uh, through their dealership. I think that may be something kind of important to uh, point out is everybody loves the Cummins motors but a lot of the dealers can't work on them because of Cummins. They won't let them into the software right. of the actual actual machine. Where with these here, they can be 100% dealer supported, correct? Right. So this is, um, would you call it a partnership with Doosan? Because everybody's gonna ask, this is the same as a... Yes, uh, so when we acquired the uh, heavy division of uh, Doosan, which is Devlon now, uh, we took on the uh, trucks and we also took on the uh, log loaders and road builders. So was there any noticeable differences other than the obviously the colors between this and the Doosan trucks? Currently, no, but when they moved to their newest version of the truck is when we came in with them. So we both got the newest version of the truck. Gotcha, gotcha. Was well, this a good opportunity to pop in the cab here and see what it looks like? Sure. Sure, it's a really spacious cab. It's got a heated air ride seat, uh, adjustable cow, steering it's like wheel. A, it's uh, like it's a, even got a co-pilot seat. Uh, it's got a seven inch monitor there. That seven inch monitor has a uh, scale built into it to let you know how much product you have in there. It also uh, lets you know what degree angle you are to keep you from dumping at bad angles to avoid tips. And uh, it's also got a back, uh, backup camera integrated into it. The, uh, this is the buddy seat here. Uh, Co-pilot chair, yeah. I've seen the most important part of this whole thing. We got a built in USB phone charger port. Yep, yeah, uh, we're kind of uh, pushing for that on our newest version of the wheel loaders too. Uh, the shifter there, if you notice, it's got a little knob on the front. So if you mash the, if you mash it forward without pushing it, accidentally hit it, it will not go into gear. You actually have to physically push the button and then move it forward for it to go into gear. Gotcha, I'm assuming this is the dump here. Yep, lift and dump. Like it. Let's hop back down and check out the rest of it. All right, Joe, we made it back down on the ground. This uh, this looks a little bit different right here. What's, I can't quite put my finger on. What's going on here? Okay, so we got our steer, steering cylinder right here, and it's uh, our competition mounts their steering cylinder behind the articulation joint back here. We mount ours on the articulation joint. As a result, as we travel down the road and we make that 45-degree turn, uh, our weight is distributed equally between the front and the back. When our competition makes that hard turn because theirs are mounted different, it adds 100% of that force going toward the front of the truck, which puts a lot of wear and tear on your machine. I don't know if anybody's uh, run these trucks, but that joint right there takes an absolute beating. It does. It's that... the weakest point in the machine, and just by doing that, you're going to save yourself a lot of life. Uh, turning radius, all that stuff, pretty close to the same? Still close to the same. Same? Yep. Uh, we do have a uh, an auto luber on it that comes as a standard feature, a really? six liter auto luber. Check that. That yeah. is cool. Yep. I'm just and, absolutely amazing. And we have a quick fill here, so you, you put a tube of grease in there, 
put it on there and just push it in, it fills it up for you really so, quick. So serviceability, we got, is this all of our filters right here? This is most of our filters except for the engine side. And of course, if we want to drain the tanks here, we've got quick little ports here to drain the tank so it makes it's it easy to, can be. to service the machine. So this is standard equipment? This is standard equipment. We really? do have a 20 liter uh, option. So if you want to get the bigger unit, right, you can, right. but the six liter is, is well enough to fix yeah. the machine. Well, let's, uh, let's face it nowadays, us operators are maybe getting a little more on the lazy side. Yeah. So stuff like that, definitely. Especially if you're running a big fleet and you can't keep a, a, an eagle eye on everything going on. Yeah. That's pretty slick. And the, and the accessibility to it yeah. is, uh, Pretty cool. I've run up against some machines that hadn't been lubed and you needed a tetanus shot just to touch it. <laughs> I mean, it was that rusty. So having this as a uh, standard feature is a really uh, good thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Another one of our good features is our seven degree sloping bed. Our competition, when their bed goes straight across. So uh, basically to point that out from here, back that whole back. bed is going to 70 degree angle yeah which so, should help keep material in there as well yeah so a lot of people like to run with the tailgate off and you know you lose product when you got that straight bed with ours it forces product to the center we, we've never had that problem the mud stays in there just you got to turn the magnet switch on you know it sucks it all in there. <laughs> yeah so because of that it also evenly distributes the weight between the front and the rear axle so you're not having all the weight back here on the back okay the so i see what you're saying you're able to move the center of gravity of that load farther forward exactly which keeps an equal load on all three axles basically we have two axles so that was going to be my next point really yep so most trucks you get you see we got six tires right and you would think there's an axle for each tire on our machines we have two axles okay. one in the front and one in the rear that has gears that go out to each one. Uh, with those points, it articulates, and because of it articulating there back and forth, it keeps in constant contact with the ground, and that makes for a limited slip traction. So this would be kind of what more, what would you consider like a motor grader style setup. So basically what he's saying, the drive line goes back to a center axle, and it comes out and splits and goes to each wheel there, yep. which would make uh, more of a walking beam style set up and then you guys can also see up there they don't have the front axle they got the planetaries uh, out there which is a completely different completely different style concept of what uh, we're used to on our particular style truck now the one huge advantage of this i think you were trying to explain it is that keeps equal weight distribution on all tires yep. which cuts down on the chance of lack of traction yep because whenever people see one of these tires spin they think it's the only one pulling. All the other tires are pulling to that resistance of that tire. Right, and because of it, when it comes back here, so you got your drive shaft that comes back here into the planetary, and then it comes, it distributes the uh, power to here. These are all gears, steel gears inside there. Now this is built all in-house in Norway where they manufacture the machine. So as far as maintenance on that, <laughs> does it share oil with the, uh, with the rear end, or is that a whole separate Deal. It's a whole separate deal. There's so, a big bearing in there, and that bearing uh, it used to be a uh, brass bushing in the middle, okay. and they've changed that from a brass to a steel. And because of that steel, they've changed it to they're getting about 10,000 hours out of that bearing now. But now, is that a, I guess that's a serviceable piece right there, or do you just replace that like an exchange? No, it's serviceable. serviceable. 100 percent serviceable. serviceable. Another feature, our tailgate. Uh, a lot of the competition doesn't give that as a standard feature. This is a standard feature for our machine is the tailgate. So as far like a guy like me, I don't really have a whole lot of use for tailgate as we haul so much brush and debris. Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that can be easily taken on and off or is it something you kind of put on and leave on? Uh, depends. A lot of people like this one because of how it seals. Okay. They love uh, this machine because of it. The limited slip and then you add on the tailgate that seals really well and doesn't let product fall out the back. They, they this love thing's this. an absolute beast in the mud. It is a beast in the mud. Beast in the mud. It is, uh, it is pretty doggone cool. It is definitely, uh, quite the different concept to what we're uh, what we're used to running. We need to get we need to get one of these things out on the job site, Joe, we and, do. and test her out. It's always nice looking at fun paint, but it's more fun getting getting clean paint dirty. Hey, let's get it dirty. And uh, one of the last things I want to talk about the uh, the dumping bed itself. We have something that isn't on this machine, but we have a heated bed option. Okay. And that heated bed option, what we do is we take the exhaust coming off the exhaust here and we run it over here to this center point and it runs up through this little bellow here. 
and this bellow runs up to the top and you see this little plate, it has holes there to let the exhaust come out. Gotcha. So this heated bed option is for colder applications and when you dump material in the back, it sticks to the bed. With, you, with the heated bed option, it warms it up and allows it to slide out of the bed more easy. We don't quite, we, it's, it's used a little bit in our area, but it's not quite as common. But you get farther north, I know that's a, that's a pretty yeah. big deal. And it, it also a little bit depends on the type of material right. uh, you're hauling as, hauling as well. So but she's definitely uh, definitely a work of art. What kind of uh, transmission are we running? We got a ZF transmission, uh, eight speed, uh, eight forward, four reverse. So it's the same ZF type transmission that we have in the wheel loaders. Wheel loaders. Yep. Which is obviously proven to be a reliable, reliable piece for sure. She's a beast, man. I like her. Well, we got a little bit of extra time this morning. What else is new and innovative in the booth we need to go check out? Uh, how about the hydrogen machine? Let's do it. You want to take a look at it? All right, Joe. So this is the hydrogen-powered wheeled excavator, correct? Wheeled excavator, the 155, which we already build, and we've added the hydrogen uh, fuel cell to it. So before we get a whole lot of comments saying hydrogen electric, everybody wants to go down that route, nobody is claiming that the hydrogen or the electric is the perfect answer for all applications but there but we got, we got to remember is there is certain applications in certain places in the world where this may be the only answer or it may be the most viable answer right so the basically from what i've gathered this does not have any type of internal combustion engine in it no it doesn't so it takes hydrogen mm -hmm. some magic stuff with oxygen it yeah. produces electricity exactly it charges our which fuel charges cell. our fuel cell which is is the fuel cell considered a battery or is the fuel yes. cell charged a battery yeah it's a, a battery itself so it's actually powered by electricity but that electricity is generated from the hydrogen and what it does is respirate water so when this machine shuts off water comes out the back really so yeah. h2o is the exhaust H h2o is the exhaust it's absolutely machine. crazy so what is like can you run a full 10, 12 hour shift of this thing? Eight hour shift. Eight hour definitely. shift. And then at that point you have to refuel. Refuel for about 20 minutes. And then is refueling the, probably the limiting factor of this being more popular than what it is as far as like the infrastructure for that in particular? Well, the limiting uh, factor is the fact that we don't have very many hydrogen uh, fueling places. Correct. So once it becomes popular and we start getting more hydrogen places around the United States to fuel it up, this will become more popular. Gotcha. And this unit here is in production? Not currently in production, but this is a machine of the future. So these are things to come here at, gotcha. at Honda. Pretty doggone cool. It's uh, it's cool. So there, there's kind of different, two different mindsets on the hydrogen. One is kind of the fuel cell repowering, which is what you've got going here. The other option is you still can basically run an internal combustion engine off hydrogen as well. Yeah, I've seen that online. Uh, I don't have any experience with it, so I don't want to lie about it. I thought we were going to get some top secret stuff here, Joe. I don't want to lie about my experience. I've been to almost every diesel school you can go to, even Billy Bob's diesel school back in Independence, <laughs> Mississippi. But I've never been to a hydrogen e engine school. Gotcha. So. Well, it is definitely, uh, definitely cool. It's, it's a little easier for me to get excited about this stuff because this is um, obviously for us, the diesel internal combustion engine in our location is pretty much irreplaceable at this point. Yeah. You know, this this is more realistic than, than full electric, I guess, is the right. best way to I go so describe it. To me, I think this would be the way to go, uh, opposed to the electric, just because of the charging time. Yeah. And having the fact, you could fill this in 20 minutes, and it'd probably take you a while to charge a full battery on an electric unit currently. Right. Now, when it becomes uh, quicker and more efficient, Maybe the ele all electric is the way we go, but currently the hydrogen uh, model is what I see being more viable. Well, it's pretty cool, man. Appreciate you for your time. Yeah, Mike. Thanks, Good to Joe. see you again, buddy. Before we get out here, guys, just want to give you a little bit of a rundown of the actual Hyundai booth they got. Quite, who is this guy? Hey, man. Where'd you come from? What's up? How we doing? Good. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas, buddy. Hey, thank you. We uh, we had the we had the experts from Hyundai give us the walk around of the whole truck and the hydrogen. Yeah, I figured there's no better person than you to give us the walk around of the, uh, the excavators here. I don't know about the better person, but you know we'll try. We'll, well we try. got the we got the 210 here. Yep, yep. Looks you familiar. Ran, uh, this looks really familiar. You yep. ran this a little bit. We after we got her tuned up, she was quite the oh yeah quite the beast. Different machine for sure. It's uh, you know it, we've we've done hundreds of walks arounds of these things, but they're just simple. And efficient for sure yep. but this is what i got my eye on next right here i think we go to the 235 what do you okay 
I we, love the zero got, turn towel. We got, we got a pool. And like, they, and they've, already, they've already pre-treated this with bed liners, so it's cleaning proof. <laughs> so you I can't mean, scratch it. This is absolutely <laughs> perfect. So you ran the 140 for a while. Uh, yes, the 140. I ran yep. the 145 for a while. Yep. I uh, I think you had a little bit of a different opinion though, but they're obviously good machines. Yeah, great machine. Loved yeah. it. We uh, we were talking about it this morning actually how. If it just had a little bit more breakout power. Well, we should have got the monitor tuned up for you. Yeah. I think if we would have got the monitor tuned up for you, you would have been in pretty good shape. This is definitely a... Uh, I see exactly what you need over there. You need the wheeled excavator. Wheeled excavator? Oh, of course. Makes good content. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do with that? <laughs> oh, man. Make good videos, John. Kind of like that bus, huh? Have they changed anything in the cabs or anything? I think th there's some stuff that's changing the features in the monitor, but the uh, the basic configuration of the cabs have been pretty similar. Okay. It smells so nice. I know. It's so it's nice. New. I've got uh, I've gotten spoiled the last couple of years busting the new paint off of uh, <laughs> off a lot of the equipment. <laughs> so this this machine here is actually something I'd be very interested in. I was gonna this, say this one's this got your size name machine. all over it. Yep. You had an 85 for a little bit, yep, right? Yeah. Yep. We had one of the first 85s in the States. And uh, honestly, I didn't know what to expect when I got in this machine, but I was thoroughly impressed. And what, I'll go back to it again. What impressed me the most was the reach, man. This thing had reach like you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe. Fairly well balanced. I mean, it's no 120 or 130, yeah. but it's a lot closer to it than what I uh, actually thought it was gonna be. For me getting in little backyards to rip out a couple stumps where you don't wanna bring the big machine in, something like this, Right. I've, I've looked into it for And sure. these things are built to have the flow to run a, a to monster. Yep. Yeah. yep, and they already come plumbed and everything for it. Right, now they, and they are also, the other thing that's advantage to this is they're under the 75 horse, so they don't have any DEF or anything like that, and I believe they're still running the MR engine. Hopefully, I, uh, get that correct but i think you'd look good in one of those things John. oh yeah for sure should have well, come down and run the one we, run the one we had but this is what uh i'm excited about possibly. oh man i have not seen this the demo one obviously this is the cto version but man this is where this is where i like hyundai like you go around this show and look into the engine bay a lot of these things and it's just total chaos and everything's pretty neat and organized except uh, accessible that's custom that's is the, that so nobody steals not, it? That's the do not tamper cap right there. <laughs> uh, but you know the biggest feature of this thing? What's that? Check out the access. Egress. Oh man, look at that. We have got... Let's try it. We've got a full roll up door on this thing. Okay. Oh man. Oh, it's locked. They got you zip tied in. Is it? Like you got that one over too. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. Wow. First impressions. Effortless. Man, this is pretty sweet, man. So I hopped in one of the Yamar skid steers yesterday. Yeah. That was basically a rebranded AVS, ASV. And I felt like. <laughs> you do not have the. Yeah. <laughs> full spread in there that's <laughs> yeah. for sure it uh hey. it's definitely a i don't know man i think it's got potential now they only offer the 74 horse machine okay so we don't have the 100 horse one for emissions reasons and different things right but i mean for rental yards and applications there's still a lot you can do with that one yeah for sure i have a hard time blowing a whole lot of holes in this one i really like what i see the the arms quick. are lower visibility is pretty good quick connect There's no hoses here. No hoses? Wow, that's crazy. I oh, know, that is a big deal if you go look at yeah. some of the other ones. Yeah, even our ASV has got a big loop going yeah. right there. Hmm. So, 74? 74 horse, 74 I horse. Yep. Okay. Nice thick done. cooling package here. I'm guessing hydraulic? Yeah, so half hydraulic, half, half hydraulic. Radar, radiator. Yep. Then this up here would be your uh, air conditioning. Nice. I like it. It's a little bit smaller in the case. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that thing's a beast. Oh man, this would be nice little 
that, that's comparable to your uh, Takahuchi size, correct? Yeah, so my Taka would be in between this and like a 250. Like okay. it's, the new TLH would be really close to this. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the, the numbers kind of get skewed there a little bit because they switch from the 140, 150, 240, 250 gotcha. to, the, to the eight numbers, but. Nice. Yeah. I don't know, it's got my attention. It definitely got my attention. High performance. Well guys, that's gonna be a wrap at the Hyundai booth here, Con Expo 2023, man. It is uh, so cool to have opportunities like this and I can't thank you guys enough. You guys are supporting the channel as well. I'm happy to do this awesome stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up. Wanna make sure you don't miss out on what's coming up next. I'd consider subscribing. That way we can catch you on the next one. Later guys.